I am back to sprinkle a little bit of optimism into the conversations on AI and the future of work. Right now, most conversations on AI focus on what we're going to lose. Displacement, automation, and all the robots that are coming for people's jobs. But here's what everyone's missing. According to the 2025 World Economic Forum Future of Jobs report, about 170 million jobs are projected to be created this decade. While 92 million jobs are projected to be displaced, we'll potentially see a net increase of 78 million jobs globally. This is data they collected from over a thousand employers across 55 different economies around the world. Now, before the economists start jumping in the comments, these, of course, are just projections. But here's the really interesting part in the report. If you watch any of my videos online, you know I'm always citing these particular findings from the report. Now, the report found that skills like critical thinking, resilience, curiosity, lifelong learning, social influence, and leadership are rising in importance faster than ever before. And these are skills that are oftentimes developed in humanities and liberal arts programs. No surprise there. Okay, so let's talk about seven jobs that AI may create. Once again, I'm just using my imagination. Please do not freak out. These are jobs that I believe humanities graduates and liberal arts graduates will potentially be able to dominate in the new AI economy. And if you're starting to realize that the future may be just a tad bit brighter than what you were imagining, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And while you're at it, hit that like button so more people can discover a different perspective on what is coming. So job number one, I would describe as a AI ethics auditor. Okay, so as more AI systems start making decisions about loans and healthcare and criminal justice and hiring, Someone needs to be asking the questions, is this fair? Who gets harmed in the process? Whose values are baked into this algorithm? Because I don't think this is actually a coding problem. I think this is a philosophy problem. It's going to require people who have studied ethics, morality, and can think critically about justice, power, and bias. I believe every single major corporation, government, institution that is employing AI should hire AI ethicists and make sure that they're ethics auditors for these new systems that are being built. So I think this job would be great for philosophy majors, political science majors, sociology majors. I just really believe we're just going to need people that can help us develop responsible AI systems and practices as well as ethical considerations into these new AI systems. Okay, job number two. I describe job number two as a data sovereignty specialists. Let me explain that a little bit more. I predict that more and more countries are actually going to start demanding sovereignty over their citizens' data, and they're going to want control over that data. Right now, our data gets passed between multiple different borders in the process of reaching us and other companies, from the EU's data regulations to countries building their own cloud infrastructure. Digital sovereignty is starting to become a geopolitical priority. So this is why I believe a data sovereignty specialist is going to become a job category that we're going to start hearing more about. I believe these professionals will be able to navigate international law, data policy, and technical infrastructure. They ensure companies that are operating globally are respecting each nation's digital sovereignty requirements. This role is going to demand understanding of different legal frameworks, geopolitical dynamics, cultural contexts, and the ability to translate between technical teams and data policy experts. As nations increasingly assert control over digital infrastructure and data flows, I believe this field potentially might start rapidly expanding. Companies will need people who can navigate this new landscape without purely technical or legal perspective. You want someone that can look at the big picture. Okay, let's get to the next one. Job number three is a memory economist slash digital legacy curator. I'm a historian, so I'm a little biased with this one, but come on, we're using our imagination. I just want us to think up new possibilities and new job descriptions that will become relevant in the future. Okay, so here's something most people have not thought about, except me, because I've made multiple videos and written multiple newsletters on this. But I believe since we're creating more personal data than ever before, photos, messages, videos, voice notes, work documents, creative projects, it's so overwhelming how much data we're producing right now. But even when we're talking in technical terms, this isn't just data. These are memories. These are legacies. And most importantly, 
This is our collective history. So what's going to happen to all of it when we're gone? This is where I think the memory economist slash digital legacy curator is going to be so important. This role sits at the intersection of storytelling and archival studies and science and psychology and curation. These professionals help organizations and institutions decide what's worth preserving, how to organize it meaningfully, and how to make it accessible or private for future generations. Everyone should have a handle on their memories and their data. And here is where things are starting to get really interesting. We're starting to see the emergence of something called the memory economy. Companies are now building systems where AI can interact with someone's digital legacy. So just imagine your great-grandchildren having conversations with an AI that is trained on your legacy. Think your writing, your values, your voice, your memories and experiences. Someone needs to curate that responsibly. There are so many larger moral and ethical issues that we need to hash out before these companies are allowed to continue to grow and have access to our digital lives and legacies and memories. It's all about how do we balance privacy with preservation, what gets remembered and what gets forgotten. These are fundamentally humanistic questions that shouldn't exist in a vacuum. I believe organizations also need memory curators, people who can prevent knowledge loss when employees leave a company and ensure that institutional wisdom doesn't also leave with them. If you're an employee, it's totally normal to switch jobs these days. So companies are going to want to make sure that all of that great knowledge and wisdom doesn't just leave out the door with you. So, of course, history majors, English majors, philosophy majors, library science specialists are all going to be poised for this role in the future. If you understand narrative, meaning making, and context, this is exactly what this emerging job field will absolutely need. Okay. Job number four is a human AI collaboration designer, if that makes sense. <laughs> that was a mouthful. I do imagine a world where more people work alongside AI than AI just completely replacing certain job categories. But I believe that partnership needs to be designed responsibly and thoughtfully. Because right now, AI chatbots and agentic AI cannot be held responsible for a lot of things. So it's still on the humans who are operating these agents and these AI systems. For example, how do nurses collaborate with diagnostic, for example, AI tools? As more and more school districts start to adopt AI tutors, how do you integrate them with teachers to make sure that they can still focus on the human connection aspects? of their work? How do architects use generative AI tools, but also maintain the integrity of their work and maintain creative control? These are deeply human problems. And as more and more humans start to collaborate with these systems, we have to figure out the balance between what the tool does and what the human does. A job like this would require empathy, understanding different workflows and processes, attention to cognitive load, and insight into what makes people and employees feel valued and not surveilled. I think it's important to note the difference between automation and augmentation. If AI is truly going to be just a tool, which it should be, then it should focus on augmenting, not automating and replacing humans. So people who studied psychology, education, communication, HR would be great for this emerging field. And if you're finding this perspective valuable, comment below and let me know which job is resonating with you so far. We're thinking together, we're imagining together. And I want to hear from you. What are some new jobs that you believe AI will create in the future? Okay, job number five, narrative strategists for AI companies. You've already seen a bunch of videos that I've made about how AI companies are hiring human writers and human content creators in order to solidify their narrative research and messaging when it comes to their companies. Because they all understand one thing, trust is so key and important in business. And right now, humans are more likely to trust another human being than a machine. But companies are going to need people that can craft clear, compelling, and honest narratives about what their technology does, why it matters, and how it's going to impact society. So it's going to require research skills, rhetoric, and the ability to translate technical concepts into emotionally resonant stories. So English majors, history majors, and other related fields have basically been training their entire lives for something like this. Every AI company is going to need a narrative strategist 
that can communicate with policymakers, the public, different domain experts. Because right now, AI is a general purpose technology that more and more people are trying to find application layers for. And there will be more application layers in the future. So you're going to need people that can explain why a technology matters. So once again, just think about it. Every new AI deployment is going to come with a bunch of questions about trust, empathy, social impact, so many questions. Someone's going to need to be able to communicate those answers in a way that resonates different audiences from regulators to end users to concerned parents. And that would be a job perfect for a humanities graduate. Now, there are going to be more and more AI companies, AI startups, AI everything. So don't just think about the big seven. There are going to be so many AI-driven companies. Job number six is data governance architect. Okay, so with this one, I was thinking about all the different regulations that exist around the world. You have HIPAA, you have GDPR, and you have the EU AI Act, amongst others that will eventually come up as well. These all create complex requirements about how data is collected, stored, and used. So organizations, at least I predict, organizations are going to need people who can design governance frameworks that are both compliant but also functional. So a role like this is going to need someone who understands policy, ethics, organizational behavior, and of course, risk. How do you create data policies that work across different jurisdictions and with conflicting laws? These are big questions that, you know, this job field will have to answer. And if you get more into this job category, I guess is how I would describe it, you would need people who are like data privacy officers, which, of course, this job already exists in a lot of places. You would need a data ethics manager, chief data officers. Like these are roles and many of the jobs and roles that I'm describing are already starting to pop up. I'm just predicting we're going to see more and more and more of these kinds of jobs. This job is going to need someone who can think critically about power, policy and privacy. OK, Job number seven is going to be perfect for my analog social members. Job number seven is a digital well-being specialist. As AI becomes more embedded in everyday life, from AI companions to workplace monitoring tools, we're going to face new psychological challenges, potentially. How do we maintain healthy boundaries with technology? What happens when your personal AI knows you better than some of your friends? And most importantly, how do we prevent AI-driven burnout. I believe a digital well-being specialist or counselor would be able to help organizations and individuals navigate this new world and era that we're living in. It's going to be a lot. They combine therapeutic skills with critical thinking, design new systems and programs that help us with our mental health, our well-being, relationships, and identity in the age of AI. This job is going to need human-centric skills like empathy, active listening, and human judgment. After a while, organizations are going to realize that supporting employee well-being in an AI-driven workplace is no longer optional. It's going to be essential for productivity and retention. Hopefully this role would bridge the gap between human needs and technological advancement. The whole idea behind this role is to make sure that we implement very important boundaries between what humans do really well and what technology does really well. And it's also a role that I hope will help us embrace our human limitations even more. We need rest. <laughs> we need sunlight. We need healthy food. We need exercise. We need all these really important things. And hopefully we can design more systems and programs that target this balance because we're going to need it more and more. Okay. So those are the seven jobs that I am thinking through and how they may emerge in the new AI economy. But here is one thing I want to leave you with. Ultimately, I believe those who will thrive in the new AI-driven economy won't just be those who can code. I believe it's those who can think critically, communicate effectively, understand context, navigate complexity, and ask the right questions. That is what a humanities and a liberal arts education teaches. And as I always say, the humanities are not dying. 
they're just undervalued and underutilized. The World Economic Forum report makes this crystal clear. Tech skills like AI and big data are growing pretty fast. The report also emphasizes creative thinking, resilience, leadership, flexibility, and agility, along with curiosity and lifelong learning. These are fundamental skills that we can continue to refine today. So we need to take back control of the AI narrative and start asking what new New roles will emerge that need my exact skills. We're entering a world where there's going to be even more collaboration between humans and machines. And I don't believe we should be building machines that can eventually supersede or completely replace humans, i.e. those who are trying to build autonomous, super intelligent technology. You know, let's keep humans, humans. You know, and it's all about how can we make that partnership work? How can we focus more on augmentation as opposed to automation with the purpose of full replacement? Okay, so if this video shifted your perspective on AI and the future of work, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe for more content that challenges conventional wisdom on AI, the humanities and the future of work. Oh, and drop a comment below. What job from this list excites you the most? And what are some other AI-created roles that you think might emerge in the future? Let's keep our imaginations alive and make better choices, not just for us, but for those in the future. All right, see you next time. Thanks for watching. This was a good video. I feel like we covered a lot. I don't know why I always get so nervous with these videos. I just start blabbing, blabbing, and then I end up having to like cut like 20 minutes of just me yapping. And you see, this is why I always need to like script these videos. Because then these videos will be like 40 minutes long. No one's going to watch them. It's just me like yapping, yapping, yapping like the academic I am. So I think I did better with this video. I, I Yeah. Okay. Time to go.